Even though it seems to be entirely a fantasy birthed from Anthony's damaged psyche, the Little Hope Witch Trials storyline is an interesting one, and I think we should take a look at that story and discover what he thinks was really going on in 1692. This video is going to be assuming the player gets the good ending and Mary is saved rather than burned to death, although every other part of the story is the same either way. The Witch Trials story begins years before the first flashback we see in the game. We have to jump two years before the flashbacks to King William's War. This was a battle between American colonists in New England and French colonists from Acadia, now generally the New Brunswick area. In the game's story, there was a massacre as part of that war in the town of Little Hope. According to a plaque we see describing it, eight men were killed and 14 women and children were abducted into slavery. There are two notable last names among the slaves, Madeline Carver, Reverend Simon Carver's wife, and Martha Milton, presumably the mother of Mary, Tabitha, and David Milton, who were central figures in the witch trials two years later. The next two years of the story get a little fuzzy, but we can establish a few things that happened. Carver, mentally shattered by the loss of his wife, began researching the occult more strenuously than he already was. It's unclear whether this was an attempt to gain some power or because he believed that he himself was the victim of Satan's work and wanted to fight it more effectively. It's important to note as an aside here that while I'll be calling Carver's motives into question going forward, there's no doubt about the fact that he was a true believer, as were all of the other people in town. For the Puritans, the supernatural was an everyday part of their lives, with signs from God or the devil found everywhere around them. Over the next year and a half, Carver was involved in two key events. The first is some manner of disagreement over finances with Joseph and Amy Lambert. According to this writ, the Lamberts owed Carver some significant amount of money, and Carver received a ruling from a judge turning over the majority of their land to him as a way of settling that debt. At the same time, Carver was growing close to Mary Milton. Presumably, they began spending time together because, as the town's spiritual leader, it was his job to look after her moral instruction after the abduction of her mother in the Commencement Day Massacre. Did Carver want to groom her so that she could replace his wife in a couple of years? People were married disturbingly young back then. Did he plan to use her as the focus of some sort of occult ritual? Was it all a plan to steal the Milton's land the way he had grabbed the Lamberts? That last motive may sound a bit far-fetched, but the fact that there are still Carvers running the town in the 1970s suggests that Carver's attempts to consolidate land and power back in the 17th century actually proved pretty successful. Now we get to the witch trial section of the story. It's important to remember that there was absolutely nothing supernatural going on that wasn't caused by the game's main characters interfering with the past. So we have to focus on the motives and actions of the characters in the past, not the floating rocks and people screaming at apparitions. Likely suspicious of Carver's motives around the lawsuit, Amy grows wary of the Reverend's relationship with Mary and begins following the young girl. She sees something suspicious, and while we don't know what it is, it's alarming enough that she decides that Mary must be wicked. The most likely explanation is that she saw something sexual happen between them. Even something as simple as a kiss would be enough for her to want to condemn the child. She goes to confront Mary in the forest, saying that she knows that Mary is a devil who's used trickery to gain the Reverend's affections. This abuse storyline is bolstered by the next flashback, in which we see Mary hiding from the Reverend's attentions. When he finds her, she reveals that Amy knows something about them, and Carver decides that Amy must be dealt with immediately. He writes out a confession for Mary, in which Amy is accused of consorting with Satan in the form of a talking dog, and that confession is taken to the judge. Amy is grabbed by Isaac, the town's resident goon, and brought to trial. Just before the trial, Mary enters with David and Tabitha, who may be her brother and sister, or she might be the sibling of one of them, and Tabitha and David are married. Their exact relationship is never made clear. They're referred to as her brother and sister, but that's also how in-laws would be referred to as well. So the exact nature of this relationship is just another thing that will be left up to the player to decide. Carver takes Mary aside and threatens to kill her and damn her soul to hell if she says anything about their secret. Whether this secret is occult or sexual in nature, it's clearly serious enough to be worth killing over. The Reverend runs the prosecution of the trial, using Mary's confession as the only evidence against Amy. Then Mary fakes a seizure. At the time, people generally believed that seizures were a sign that someone was possessed or cursed by a devil, and Carver uses this belief to frame Amy, telling her to touch Mary, the belief being that if she caused the curse, only she can remove it. 
Mary immediately stops shaking when Amy touches her, proving Carver's theory to the court and ensuring Amy's execution. We can tell that the event was a put-on arranged by the two of them when, a moment after the seizure ends, instead of being dazed, confused, or incapacitated in any way, Mary is instantly fine once again. Amy is sentenced to death and brought to the river for execution. In a final statement, she accuses Mary of being in league with the devil. It's a well-observed part of the story that even though Carver is trying to take her land, and Carver is the one who accused her of witchcraft and ensured her execution, she blames Mary for all of his sins. This is a fairly accurate portrayal of the attitudes of the time. No matter how villainous Carver might act, as a man of God he would be above reproach, so his victim Mary is blamed for inspiring his actions. With the town on edge after Amy's execution, Tabitha attempts to protect Mary when she sees the young girl playing with a doll. Worried that any out-of-the-ordinary behavior could convince people that Amy was right about Mary, Tabitha takes the doll from her and makes the fatal mistake of not immediately destroying it. Mary tells Carver about the incident with the doll, and Carver sees it as the perfect opportunity to further his plan of getting Mary all to himself. He concocts another confession for Mary to swear on and sends Isaac to arrest Tabitha. She is quickly convicted and executed. David is next. We don't see any of the lead-up to it, but it's safe to say that Carver simply made up another false accusation by Mary and got the judge to sign off on it. Disturbed at the sight of Tabitha's death, Mary begins to push back against Carver's demands, attempting to save David's life, but Carver is resolute and has the man executed. Unfortunately, Carver's plan goes awry. Instead of gaining custody of Mary the way he wanted, the judge tasks Abraham, a man who hasn't been involved with the trials as anything but an observer, to look after her. The game actually makes a mistake here, where Carver refers to Abraham as her ward, when actually she's the ward and he's the guardian. Racked with guilt at causing three deaths and terrified of Carver, Mary confesses to Abraham, telling him about her and Carver's secret. Abraham is caught in a bind. He believes that Mary seems sincere, but also believes that the devil is an excellent trickster and worries that she could be deceiving him, just as Amy said. He goes to Joseph for advice concerning Mary. Joseph agrees with his wife's dying accusation and insists that Mary is the evil one, demanding that she be dealt with. Worried that Joseph's talk around town of Mary's evil nature will spoil his plans for the girl, and possibly hoping to finish grabbing the Lambert property, Carver has Mary swear out yet another accusation, this one against Joseph. When Abraham goes to speak out against Mary's accusations, the judge finds himself wavering in his convictions. Then, when during his execution, Joseph again accuses Mary of being in league with the devil, his words start to convince the town. The town quickly turns on Mary, deciding that she was the evil one all along, which puts Carver in a difficult position. If he tries to defend her, he could lose his authority in the town that comes from his perceived righteousness. So he abandons his plans for the girl and brings her to trial, accusing her of witchcraft and hoping that by arranging her quick execution, he'll be able to tie up any loose ends and get away with his crimes. At the last moment, however, Abraham decides to defend Mary and accuse Carver. While the judge is initially skeptical, after Abraham whispers Mary and Carver's secret to him, Wyman is so disturbed by the idea that he calls off the trial and sets Mary free. Carver is humiliated in front of the town and storms off. Soon after, Judge Wyman orders an outside investigation into the witch trials, specifically Reverend Carver's conduct in the matter. At the end of the inquiry, Carver is stripped of his position as the town's reverend, although, tragically, that seems to be the extent of his punishment. Although we have no specific evidence of what happens next, Mary presumably was once again assigned to be Abraham's ward, and she lived out the rest of her life dealing with the mistrust of the town, which never got over the horrors of the witch trial. This ostracization continued past the end of Mary's life. She was even buried at the edge of town, because the townspeople were uncomfortable with the prospect of her being buried near the victims of the witch trials she was an integral part of. So that's the story of the Little Hope Witch Trials of 1692, which, again, didn't actually happen within the game world. While one could watch this story and imagine that Anthony read about an actual witch trial in the area, and then merely plugged his family's faces onto the real people, there's some interesting evidence within the game that no one from the witch trial actually existed. That evidence? This map of Little Hope in the year 1692. First things first. Soon after fleeing from the bridge, the character finds the graveyard from the cutscene at the start of the game. In addition to the Clark family graves, the player can find graves of major players from the witch trials, Isaac, Wyman, and Abraham. This doesn't make sense, though because all of these characters would have been buried at the old cemetery, which we can see on the map is way out at the edge of town. 
The Clark family was buried at the New Cemetery, which is obviously much closer to the large bridge near the center of town. Even more intriguing are the names visible on the map. Abbott, Ballard, Bixby, Blanchard, Blunt, Chandler, Garrison, Howell, Lovejoy, Osgood, Phelps, and Roger. Quite notably, none of the characters in the flashbacks are represented on that map. Their last names are Milton, Carver, Lambert, Alastor, Wyman, and Worrell. If these people were prominent in town, where are their houses and land? How could Lambert and Carver have enough land that it was worth fighting over, but not be mentioned on the map? Judge Wyman, a man in charge of governing the area, would certainly have had property somewhere in town. So where is it? No, this map stands in direct contradiction with much of what Anthony imagines in his visions. Yes, the map could be a figment of his imagination as well, but if it were, wouldn't it reflect the flashback characters the way the King William's War plaque does? Instead, it paints a very different picture of the town than were shown in the flashbacks, suggesting that it's one of the few real things that Anthony sees during his night in Little Hope. I've been the Hidden Object Guru, thanks for watching the video. You can check the playlist for more Dark Pictures content, and let me know in the comments if there's an aspect of the game you'd like me to delve into. I'll see you back here for the next thing, but until then, au revoir.